good evening, everybody, and you're very welcome to the first Abbey Side Battle and Corti uh, live YouTube broadcast. Tonight, we're going to bring you the Waterford Senior Football Final from 2007, live from Fraher Field. Everybody is very welcome. Uh, we have about 80 viewers at the moment, and we're hoping that that will go up as time goes on. We have a small, little few pieces as an introduction before we start. We're going to start on a small slideshow of various different pictures for the time, and we'll speak to you after that.
Now, just before we hand you over to Farfield, uh, we'll go through the team sheet. So the team sheet has just been handed in. So we'll just go through and look at exactly the Ballinacorty team to play. Ballinacorty number one, Stephen Enright. Full back line, Joey Mullen, John Kindergan and Gavin Breen. Half back line, Shane Briggs, John Horney and Richie Foley. Midfield, Sean O'Hare and Patrick Lynch. Half forward line, Mark Fiers, Lawrence Horney and John Phelan. A full forward line, Gary Horney, Patrick Horney and Mark Ferncombe. So that's the team as laid out. And we have one or two small messages just before the uh, the match gets underway. We managed to catch up with Jim Kiley, who was the goalkeeper for the three county championships in senior football that were won before 2007. So Jim had a little message, and here's Jim's message. Hi there, Jim Kiley here. For anyone who doesn't know me, I was on goal for the three county finals for Ballon Corti. The first one they won 78, 79 and 81. Part of a mighty team. It's hard to believe that from 81 to 2007 it took to win another one, even to get into one. We were much the same the first year, 78. In 1970 we won minor hurling, minor football, under 21 hurling, under 21 football. We played the whole, it took eight years with them players. We won a couple of under 21 football, it took eight years to win a senior, it's hard to believe it. They're not easy to win, I suppose. We didn't train very hard, I can tell you that. There was a lot of us there, there was a lot more drinking than training. But we owed all to Tony Mansfield, I'd have no doubt about that. He was hard but he was fair. He'd ask us there now and night, you know, so a lot of times we were telling him lies anyway. He'd say, how are we feeling tonight? And we'd say, we're tired. And he'd say, just do two laps of the field. But I think a lot of it was in the head and in the heart. We die for one another. Like, I suppose looking back on the on the 78 team, the big asset we had was John Dwyer coming to us. And we Tom Whelan coming then another year. So just while I'm on that man, we won it in 78 and Tom Whelan wasn't with us. I remember he was staying down St. Patrick Crescent. And he wasn't the happy man, you know, when we passed down on the lorry. Because he was at the back and against us. But he joined us the following couple of years and contributed greatly. I suppose when we're talking about Tom Whedon, if I can remember right, Tom was the only connection with the 81 team and 79 team that was with the 2007 team. He was a slick on it, which is a fair length of time. Tom gave great service to the old club and a real sound bloke altogether. It isn't that we didn't like the train at all. We loved going train, but we found it hard to go home out of it. I remember we used to go to Thomas Crotty's, Tommy Hallhans, five or six of us, but the trouble is Tony Mansfield would have it the following night. That what we used to forget about was Peter Power was delivering for Power's brewery. And so the first thing Tommy Allen said to him in the morning, all the bell and court people were up last night drinking. And we were hammered then. That was the end of that. But just the connection with Walker Joinery Lorry, I remember that was there in 78. Out around Bell and Court, around Abbey Side. It was great. And I drove the lorry in 2007. After such a long break, it was great to see the lads win in 2007. And I was honoured to be able to, to be asked to drive John McGrath's lorry to bring the lads around the village and everywhere. It was great. And I remember when we won it, Don Minerys wrote a song in 78 but all the teams would beat and all that. And he said in the end, less lines in the end of it. And we long for the hurling. We're still longing, but hopefully with the young lads that are coming today, that won't be too far away. Before I finish up anyway, I'd like to, all the lads that played at me, I hope they're able to find this on YouTube. I don't know if there's any been nursing homes or anything, but surely someone will give them a hand to find it. Good luck lads, we'll have a drink sometime. Fair play Jim, and I think everybody has the same sentiment there about being able to meet one another again um, whenever we can. The last word before we go to Fratterfield rests with the captain. John Horney, captain, Dabby Side, Balnacorti, to win the County Senior Football Championship in 2007. We leave the last word before we go to Fratterfield with John Horney. And after that, the commentary will be by Kieran O'Connor and the late John A. Murphy. So enjoy, everybody. We hope that wherever you are, that uh, you enjoy going back on the memories of 2007. 
Here is John's message, and as I say, from here we go straight to the commentary team in Fraherfield. Hi, um, I'm John Herney. Uh, you're probably all excited to watch the tonight's match and relive some of Abby Saiban Lacorti's greatest memories and obviously cap. There's three ways this can go. I suppose one is detailed like Tony Mansfield. Abbey Side founded in 1927. Van de founded 1947. Amalgamated in 67. And we won the Comic Cup in 07. All the sevens are, we could go a bit like Greg Fives, a bit more passionate. Hey, Lenny! Get the ball into the big fella, into the kitchen. <laughs> or, uh, we go a bit more direct like The Rock, Collins, Mick, uh, get up, get on with it, stop messing, straight to the point and I think I'll go with The Rock on this. It was an absolute great honour to uh, captain this great team, the dedication and commitment every player showed to the club throughout that year was absolutely incredible but none of them could have done it without the massive support from the management, the club, the, their families and obviously all the supporters. I suppose trying to remember back to the day of the match, <laughs> this is all a bit of a blur. I suppose you're you're so fully focused and concentrated on the task in hand, trying to bring home the Conway Cup to this great club. And uh, one I suppose memory that sticks out the most is uh, uh, Aidan Landers. He 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 didn't make the the team photo at all as. He was too busy gelling his hair inside in the inside in the bathroom thinking he was uh, besides answer to I suppose Ronaldo or Beckham or something. But look, it was an it was an absolutely fantastic feeling lifting the Conway Cup with all my close friends, family and all standing beside me, shoulder to shoulder with me. So hopefully <laughs> we can all we can all do it again soon enough, but Maybe time is catching up with me. I, I remember Matty asking me in, back in 2011, would you play one more year? And uh, I can't see him asking me that again next year. <laughs> um, uh, I suppose at times like this, uh, going through all these memories and thinking back on things, you, you can't but remember some of the great uh, club men and women that have uh, sadly passed away in our great club. Um, obviously never to be forgotten. Uh, one example of uh, one fellow who's been supposed at the club since the day I was joined the club, and he was there up until I suppose a couple of months back. Uh, the great Jimmy O'Leary never wanted to threaten with him. Bought the water jerseys, all everything there ready, raring to go. Great man, and obviously there's a lot more. Won't go into it just in case. Uh, I forget anyone, so I I I'll move on. So um. I can't really remember much about the match, so I hope it's a good match. I hope you all enjoy it. I do remember the drinks afterwards, so I hope they taste as good uh, tonight as they did back in 07, as we were celebrating uh, in the village of Abbeyside up on Kylie's truck. Court to you, boo. Have a great night. Enjoy. <laughs>
Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay, hello everybody. The question is the best of all. Don't get out of an uh, for the past two. Uh, the referee for the team, John Michael Teddy, on the Tower Club. And of course, the blue and white of Ardmore. Ardmore now wearing a white jersey with blue strip, and of course, the fame Bell McCourty, green and white hoops. And John Horney, what a day! We spoke at the Hennessy, what a day for the Horney family. Uh, Panky Horney manager and four sons lining out, and the team being led by John Horney over on the far side. Absolutely, Kim. Again, when you talk about the Hennessy's of Ardmore in the next breath, you have to talk about the Horneys and Bell McCourty, and, and indeed Abbey side too, because these fellas are just as good as hurlers as they are footballers. And you know, Packy, Packy sets the scene, Packy is the man management man and and his inspirational really on one side of the of the, of the sideline and his four sons are inspirational on the other side of, of that white line so i think when you again the, the, the horny contribution has been in, into their match to this final has been huge but of course it would be unfair to suggest that uh, more and bella are in this final and more and bella are in this final because of either the hennessy's or the hornies they're certainly there both families have had a huge input but uh, it's been a great team effort on the on the, part of, on the part of both sets of players and uh, I'm sure that the Hornies and the Hennessy's themselves will be the first to act, want, to want to acknowledge that. Well, a great scene here and the teams make their way just coming over to the stand side. The um, blue and white of Ardmore and lots of flags here and great to see green and white here as well. So great colour here, great excitement as the teams and the Thomas and Francis Maher up here this afternoon in Farfield. Normally accustomed to seeing them in Walsh Park. They're here today today at the occasion as John Horney leads out the men in green and white. Behind him, the big goalkeeper Stephen Enright, the young UCC student behind him wearing two Joey Mullen three John Kendrigan, four Gavin Breen, one of the experienced players on this side good horror, good footballer, Shane Briggs five, a county star and of course his dad and, and, and granny are here in the stand leaving behind them is Richie Foley more known as a horror but a very accomplished footballer wearing seven, the UCC man number eight, Sean O'Hare, one of the youngest on the side and what a semi-final he had uh, and he uh, the court, he looking for a repeat today, behind him, Patrick Linney as he's known, he's a, an exceptional talent, underage player a few years ago, he's there, Mark Five, son of the great Craig, Lawrence Hurley, the older of the four brothers, John Beefy Field bringing up on 12, Gary Hurley wearing 13 and looking for some, and Mel McCourty will be hoping it's not a look for him today, Patrick Hurley, the youngest of the brigade, and Mark Byrne from Furry bringing up the rear, the teams break away and of course leading out Alan North of Ardmore, behind him Connor Hurley, two Austin Flavin, three Michael Supple, four Connor McNamara, five Nile Hennessy, one of the Hennessy clan, six the great Declan Pernagas, Horler and footballer, seven Richie Hennessy, eight Gary North, brother of the captain, nine Big Seamus Prendergast, ten James E. O'Donnell, twelve Wayne Hennessy, thirteen Johnny Hennessy carrying a great name that we mentioned earlier, fourteen Billy Hardy, son of selector Billy and our colleague at WLR and bringing up the rear, fifteen Clinton Hennessy. Johnny, the pitch is in great condition, the wind isn't too well, swirling a little bit, but this has the ingredients of, of a cracker of a final. It has indeed, Kevin Kiernan, for a November Sunday, the conditions are absolutely excellent, so it's everything to play for. Two good teams, two teams deserve to in this final. They are there certainly on merit alone. And if both play to the limit of their potential, then I think we really will have a good football final. The campaign itself overall hasn't been all that great. But today, our board and Ballon Court is down to the final too. And I expect that we'll have a great final, Kieran. And great to see the young mascots there, Thomas Power, son of the manager Tom Power and Tom Ahern, their part, the young, the young little Thomas Ahern. They're there as part of the backroom team. But a good crowd here to stand almost completely full and the large attendance here the Thomas Maher Fife and Drum Band have on the town side on the left hand side it's the Ardmore team Tom Power and Billy Harty standing with their charges 45 metres out wearing the blue and white strip referee in the middle of the field big day for, again for John Michael Kelly very experienced ground here stand almost completely full and great to see the Young children wearing the colours. And all the 
Irish crowd are going to stand for Ron Avine. <laughs> the legend out in, out in Ardmore and the minute silence here and probably a very unfortunate for the Hennessy fans. Well, Cain, when they asked them it seven or eight weeks ago, Ardmore won by six points. We weren't flattered by the, that margin of victory. Uh, I, I tend, I have the slightest of fancies today for Ballinacorty, I have to say, but uh, it, it really is a, 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 a battle that's likely to go right down to the wire. I cast, uh, I'd say Ballinacorty by a point or two points. Johnny, I, I just mentioned there about Sean Hennessy's sister, Joanne Hennessy, who has passed away, unfortunately. That really could be an inspiration that uh, could we actually drive on the, the Hennessy clan and all of Ardmore as well to Absolutely. do it for um, Joanne Hennessy. Absolutely, here no, no, I suspect uh, the Hennessy's or anyone else in Ardmore won't need any great motivation today. They're fired up for as, an, as indeed are Bell Courtney. Here the scene is set for what I expect and hope will be a cracking county final. So just looking down, Ardmore playing from left to right, so they're defending the country goal in front of now the, what is the recycling plant down our left, down our right the Bell Courtney goalie in goal of course Stephen Enright of course nephew of the great Padner Enright and of course his dad Liam no mean horror as well and that family steam to tradition the ball is in and where's the Conrad Cup going for us this evening Patrick Lynch wins it for Ballon court he sends it in route one looking aside for Mick Gary Hardy will you see caught aside by Mick Supple the full back that was a great catch he was running back did win the catch it and a good clearance to boot sends it way up feet to Alan North the captain coming deep to win it he wins the ball but that was a superb catch lovely high ball in from the middle of the field but brilliantly caught by Supple he started the way he wants to continue Richie Hennessy takes the ball quickly Swings it into the corner to Clinton Hennessy. Normally in goal with the hurlers, but doing very well outfield. Lovely touchback by Clinton. Feeds it very well to Gary North. Gary tries to swing it across. Oh, that's well won by young Sean O'Hare for Ballon Corty. Send it to Lawrence, the experienced Lawrence Hurney. Lawrence sends a ball into the corner. He's looking for Gary. Gary running out. That's Gary Hurney. First touch for the Interprovincial. Steps inside his marker. He's wearing 13. He kicks it. Oh, but he kicks it right and wide with that left foot. Lovely sweeping movement. Lawrence Hurney sent it across. Gary won the ball. Turned his marker right and wide. Yes, Kieran. There was a chance, a difficult chance to be sure, but it was wide. But I have to say, Michael Supple has had the best possible start that was a quite magnificent catch oh, under extreme difficulty and uh, it, it might well be the start of a great day for Michael Supper but it certainly was a superb piece of defensive football of course his dad has won medals and and in score county and provincial in all Ireland but I'm sure they dearly love a senior medal to rest in the house tonight cook kick out by Conor Hurley goal for the Art Moorman caught in the middle of the field by Gary North Feeds it back to Declan Prendergast, the centre-back for the Yard Moorman, inside their own 65, to Richie Hennessy. He sends it along across, covering crosses. Richie, that's Richie Foley, but beaten to there by James e. O'Donnell. This could be the end for Ballon Court. E. O'Donnell has the ball. 30 metres out, turns his left, well blocked down by Richie Foley. But the ball breaks back to Clinton Hennessy. He's going goalward, fists across. He has Alan North on foot. Oh, that's beaten away brilliantly inside by Fifi Phelan for the Ballon Court. Man. Out to the chain breaks, and away come Ballon Court, out of the fence. Ball goes to Sean. John O'Hare, good play by O'Hare, they're linking well with Lawrence Hurley, O'Hare now is going inside his own 65, one of the youngest on this Ballon of Corti team, a young lad with great potential but blocked down well by Declan Prendergast, but was it a foot block, yes says referee John Michael Kelly, and it's going to be free in for Ballon of Corti, 45 metres out, good attacking movement by Art Moore, but well blocked in defence by John Phelan. Again, just as Michael Supple at one end, Kieran, an excellent piece of defensive work by John Phelan there, undoubtedly this is a deserved free to Ballon of Corti. It's on the 45 metre line, a, a difficult one, but it's taken short. Gary Horney takes it quick to mark five, runs ahead for the return. Now he's gone inside the 20. Horney still has the ball. He's gone inside, takes the Prendergast. What can he do? It swings across. Lawrence holds it. He's on the edge of the square. What can he do with it? He's surrounded by two hard more, but he holds on to possession. In the end, he loses possession, and in the end, it's going to be. 
A free and relief for the Art Mormon take quickly by Richie Hennessy, son of the legend John Hennessy. One of the best footballers I ever saw in Warford is John Hennessy. He's a proud Art Mormon and his sons are doing well today. Sweeping up into the corner to Clinton Hennessy, son of Declan. He gets it on to Wayne Hennessy. Lovely bit of movement from the Art Mormon to Alan North, the captain. Got inside a 45, playing for a free, doesn't get it. Worked back to Clinton Hennessy. Right foot and swings it across, cut off by Shane Briggs. Inside his own 45 and away come Ballon the Corti. Briggs gives it to Mark Five inside his own 65 now he's on the halfway line now he's inside the yard more 65 good play by Mark swinging it into the corner well played by Patrick Todd Hurley he's fouled this time by Supple got out in front of the full back foul and a free in for Corti yes Nick yeah, it's, it's early minutes yet but it's absolutely it's, it's certainly open and it's lively so far so the, the scene as I said is being set for a good county final Mark Five's coming up to take it scored Two points the, the last day in the semi final, six points so far in the championship. Son of Greg and, of course, grandson of Michael Fies, part and parcel of Abbeyside, Ben Lacorti kicks it across the face of the goal. My balls go high, hit off Gary Honey, he hit the upright there. He got a touch on it. The goalie didn't save, it, but the crossbar saves Art Moore. No hit come Art Moore and relief for the men in blue and white. Lovely ball in by Mark Fies, doubled on in the air by Gary Honey, and the crossbar comes to the rescue. Absolutely, Kim. Decidedly good fortune for Art Moore. Decided he bad look for Ballon Corti. A great effort by Gary Corn Corn. He said only the woodwork kept the ball out. Four minutes gone end to end stuff. First touch for the captain. That's John Horney inside his own 65. Coming up field. Good strong running by the centre back. What'll he do with? He sends us route one straight down the middle, but cut off again by Supple. Superb player by Supple. Young player of the year a few years ago. Very experienced campaigner. But the ball only out the middle of the field. Sean O'Hare sends it back into the corner. Won by Gary Horney. Coming out to the 45. Left foot. Takes each other. Could happen. Beat the goalkeeper but the goalkeeper read it all the way and well saved by Conor Hurley in the Ardmore goal the fireman will he have put out many more fires this afternoon before this game is over ball to Alan North the captain really roaming, roaming way down into his own half into the corner Clinton Hennessy playing a lot of ball coming way outfield gives it back to Richie Hennessy two cousins linking up and the ball goes back to Clinton he sends it high it's a Gary Owen dropping about 30 metres out it could be dangerous drops first touch for Billy Hartley swings the ball aside this could be very dangerous but cut off inside there by Shane Brick came from nowhere swept back and released it could have been a certain score the ball comes to Richie Foley we're still waiting for the opening score you're listening to our AIB big match five minutes gone ball up to Touch Hurney Touch has the ball younger member of the four Hur Hurneys he's going inside the 45 it's still Hurney Supple is staying goal side now he's at the 20 metre line way over on the far side from the stand side turns to his left curls it in it could be a good one Oh, it's gone right and wide there. Did everything right, right and wide. We're still waiting for the opening score of five and a half minutes, but good sweeping movement. Absolutely, Kieran, and the surprise is that we haven't had a score so far because both sides have had chances at either end. Again, Shane Briggs uh, cleared a potentially dangerous situation down there. We've had goal chances at either end. No score yet, but plenty of chances being created. And the young supporters down on the left-hand side cheering on the men in green and white. Down on the far side, on the right-hand side, town end is the blue and white. From the kick-out, Declan Prendergast wins for the yard more. Man. Holds the ball up, gives it to Wayne Hennessy. Very talented young player, swings it into the corner. Out comes Kendrick and makes it his own. That's good play by the Ballacorti fullback. Walter Lawrence Hurley to John Phelan. Fifi sends the ball in low, looking for Gary Hurley. He's the target man. Hurley gets out in front of his marker. What can he do with this ball? He picks it up under pressure. Good pressure there by the cornerback, Conor McNamara. But Hurley swings it back as far as John Phelan sends the ball in across to Mark Five. Mark came from nowhere to win that one. 20 metres out. He's down here on the left-hand side. Country goal in. Of Fraherfield. Sends the ball dangerously across. The ball breaks inside. The punch Hurley. Go Snicky Sean. Was he? Yes, he was just going to pull the trigger, and from here it looked like Seamus Prendergast just to push the back. As Hurley was just going to rifle a shot, in came Seamus Prendergast, and referee John Michael Kyle Kiley had no hesitation, penalty. Oh, no question about it, Kieran. It was an undisputed penalty. Um, otherwise, it would have been a goal, certainly. So it's a great, great chance for Corti here to get off the mark in a big way. Matty Kiley comes in with the vital bottle of water and on the on the line is the man Mark Furry Ferncombe of course his uncles PP John John Maureen Edo introduction to football followers across the bridge in Dungarvan but Furry grandson of the great Seamus O'Brenon is the man with the responsibility 15 and he's back scored a penalty in the semi-final against the Nair it's Ferncombe for Battle of Court on the goal line is Conor Hurley
he's taking his time he's gone back in to replace it again a lot of argy bargy on the 20 meter line John Michael Kelly asking every player to stay out will this be the opening score we've seven and a half minutes gone here comes the penalty here comes Foley takes his shot oh off the upright can he get it the rebound the goal is gone by Foley he hit it low and hit the upright and he was quickest to react in for the rebound give Conor Hurley no chance the goal for Battle of Forty the opening score Jay Prendergast turns around a disappointed man eight minutes gone one goal no score yeah they had a slice of look there Kim. the penalty wasn't the best in the world came back off the upright and said but fair play to, to Matt Ferncombe his speed he was forced to, to react to the, to the breaking ball and finished his expertly to the back of the net. A flying start from Ballon O'Corty. Goal, no score. We were looking for the opening score. We thought it might be a point and Tom Power, the manager, having a with Billy Harty. Ferry come to react to the situation and he was quickest to it and finished it from Cold Range. The, the elbow keeper had no chance. So the kick out, Connor Hurley to take it. For the yard more, man. One goal, no score. Nine minutes gone. Ben Lecourty lead. That goal, a penalty by Mark Furry Ferncombe. From the kick out, it's won by Ben Lecourty. But it's lost now. And John Hurley is coming forward. He's going to score the 55. What can he do with it? Oh, the foul there goes in for the yard more, man. It's going to be free out there. He's really pumped up. Conor McNamara, I see he's dead down under us there. The great Mick McNamara, the manager of Clare. He's down watching his son. And his son felt that one. Ball taken quickly by the yard more, man. Sweeping up field. Well cut out here by Gavin Breen more known as a hurler but a very accomplished footballer as well to Shane Briggs one of the county players on this Battle of Corty team right footer sends it long looking for Gary again on route one that's Gary Hurley Gary holds up the ball turns and twists Conor McNamara swings it across coming forward is young O'Hare that's Sean O'Hare the UCC student right footer kicks it under pressure good pressure by Conor McNamara forced them to kick it wide but score remains one goal no score uh, here, the, the, this Battle of Corty defence is really on its game they're forced out to every ball and John Hurley there and uh, Okay, he did foul at the end charge in the play, but the, the, the speed with which he moved on to it out ahead of his marker these fellas are really re- they're up for this one big time 10 minutes gone you're listening to our AIB big match kick out Conor Hurley for the Ardmore man down the left hand flank on the far side Ardmore playing from left to right ball broke down to Lawrence Hurley turns and picks it in low into the corner running across for this Patrick Hurley can he win it but well intercepted there by Mike Supple the full back who's having a great game in this opening period feeds it to Richie Hennessy still inside their own 20 metre line to Seamus Prendergast who's come back to help the hurler now turned footballer very much a jewel star on the start more team carries it out over the line under pressure from Mark Five. line ball over on the far side Neil Moore I see him on the far side part of the backroom team down under us of course you have Packy Hurney and Tom Whelan Tom, Tomaso Fuelon from unranked part and parcel of the backroom team on the far side it's 45 metres out Patrick Lynch who was a good boot of a ball will he go for Ruth one to lob it into Gary is he looking for options for us a shorter one he's going long he's kicking it high across it's Lawrence Hurley coming over and Declan Prendergast Declan goes high face the hole first reactor was Gary Norton good play by Gary but he's clear it's not a good one goes as far as John Field and a heavy shoulder there by Seamus Prendergast too heavy says referee John Michael Kelly a free in and a chance for Mark Fives to get the opening point of the game yes Kieran it's about 42 metres out uh, dead straight in front of the goal it's certainly well within uh, Matt Fives' range so I, I would expect that he'll convert this one 11 and a half minutes gone Strably, of course, have been flag bearers since 2000. Won their five in a row last year. It was denier this year. Will it be Belnacorti? Will it be Art Moore? Mark Fives. His first free of the afternoon. Doesn't catch as clean as he's like. The ball is picked down the edge of the goal. And it's Gary Horney again. I don't believe it. To react with not the best kick from Mark Fives, but Gary Horney ran out and got the fist onto it. Sticks it in the back of the net. No one saw it coming. Gary Horney, great opportunism. Real class. Two goals, no score. And again, the genius of Gary Horney was shown to perfect. Absolutely, Kieran, but I have to say it, it was very, very poor defensive play by our board. They'll certainly, when they when they reflect on that one, they'll be kicking themselves. But it was a, a very poor free by Matt Fies, but what, what a result he has got from it. So it's, it's certainly well. There's some start now for Balnacorty. So two goals, no score. Ball fed up field. Richie Foley coming forward. That's good play by the halfback. Gone inside the 45. No, 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 down well no, 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 by Niall Hennessy covering across there. <laughs> They've had a dream start here and a disaster start for our ball. The ball goes now to John Phelan. 
John Phelan gives it back to Furry. He visit it across the goal mode and touched in by Patrick Horney. Again, the high ball. This time it was Patrick Horney got a touch on it. But they say, free out. Yeah, it's a square infringement, Kieran. But, um, Kieran, I think that free, I think that, that second goal, I, Gary may not have got a flick to it. And Matt Fies' free may have well have gone all the way. Well, all the players went over to congratulate him anyway. But um, time will tell. But the scoreboard, anyways, two goals, no matter whether it went straight enough, Mark Fies or from Gary Horney. Time will only tell. But the scoreboard is two goals to no score. Patrick Corney takes the kick quick on the rear attack and it goes right and wide and they're totally in command Kieran territorially now they've had, they must have had 90% of the play at this stage they're absolutely dominant throughout the field there's a two goal start six point lead uh, at this stage they're absolutely rampant they're more just haven't got to come out of blocks at all but really in a final you need look and definitely Ben LaCourty had the look because Mark Fies was going to tip it over miss hit the ball ends up in the back of the net oh without shadow without Kieran it was, it was, he was, it, the intention was to score a point but he, he got three points with the one goal yeah. 14 minutes gone Ben Corti leading two goals they wanted a good start they've got it from the kick out Richie Hennessy wins it he's doing well in the half back line powering forward gets on to Seamus Prendergast sends the ball in long route one covering cross Gavin Breen that's great play by the cornerback and I must say the Ben Corti defence very much on top here this afternoon to Shane Briggs coming out of defence links up with Joey Mullen first touch for the cornerback giving it on to Mark Fives he's gone inside the 45 what can Fives do with this when he holds up the ball dispossessed in the end and away from the yard Mormon Seamus Prendergast has Get it across to Wayne Hennessy inside his own 65. Hennessy sends it long, covering it across to John Kindergan, picked up by Joey Mullen. Good play by the cornerback. Joey Mullen out to Lawrence Hurley, the older of the Hurley brothers, sends the ball in long, looking for Gary, but across comes Connor McNamara, a man who played hurling for Clare, now playing the football for the yard more man. He wins that ball, did he touch it on the ground? Play answers the referee, Gary Hurley. Dispossessed him, feeds it back to John Phelan. That's good play by Hurley. Getting it back to Phelan. 20 metres out. What can Phelan do with this one? Turns to have a shot and kicks it right. And it didn't go wide in the end. It's held up by Mark Fies and across there. Again, is Richie Hennessy giving it everything he can. So two is Port Hurley over near the far corner flag. Gone out. Line ball. Here it's all about the court. They are absolutely dominant right throughout the field. Their defence in particular is absolutely superb. The clash, they have more attack and getting a look in right. Tony Mansfield over on the far side, of course, chairman of the club. Of course, Tony, manager of the team way back, 78, 79 and 81. Johnny, I can't believe it's 26 years ago since that, that great game here in 81. That's right, Kieran. Tempest Fugit, my friend. It really does. I see Rue over there, of course, part of the backroom team. There's an injury to Patrick Corney there and Mark Fives there, just over near the far side, but nothing too serious. And Tomas Kiley, part of the backroom team. Does he's running repairs, and it's going to be three out in relief for the yard. More men. There's two goals to no score. Those two goals, one from a penalty by Mark Farncombe, the second one, it was a free by Mark Fives. Not quite sure if Gary Horney got the touch for it or not, but the ball ended up in the back of the net, and it's two goals, no score. A free from that line ball to Ballina Corty. Patrick Lynch takes it kicks it in high for looking for Gary Horney one inside by Declan Prendergast great determination by the centre back the Warford hurling full back very much a dual star on this team of course part of the team who won three under 21 titles back in the early part of this decade ball out now towards Michael Supple for Ardmore feeds it across to Niall Hennessy coming out of defence good play by Niall lovely ball into the corner looking for Clinton gone into the right hand corner he has the ball coming out 45 metres trying to turn his marker he does that's Joey Mullen Clinton kicks it in long and high but is it gone right and wide in the end it goes right and wide would you believe it's the first wide for Ardmore there's four for Banner Corti but the score remains two goals no score two well last weekend of course we had the Malumphy brothers four on the team one on the panel today we have the Hornies and we have five Hennessys on the team and, and, and three Hennessys and the substitutes all all related so very much family affair here in Waterford G last year of course we had the Walshers with the Nair we had the Walshers with Stradbally and it goes on and on right back to the great Kerwins and the Walshers in Kilrossenty the Fern Combs in Dungarv and, and the Powers in Ratgarm with Johnny these great sport, uh, GA families Ah, oh, superb GA families indeed absolutely here kick out for Banner Corti taken high broken down in the middle of the field first to react to it is John Kendry and coming out with it that's good play by Kinders as he is known the full back Slips to the ground but gets the ball away. Picking it up as Shane breaks. Links up with Patrick Lynch. Left footed. His grandma, Chrissy, I'm sure is Chrissy Terry is, is somewhere in the stand. Ball up to Gary Horney. Lovely ball by Gary. Looking for a brother. Had Pudge but picked up inside by Suffolk. Having a great game at fullback. Feeds it to Austin Flav at the cornerback. Austin gives it to Connor McNamara. McNamara, the clear man. The clear hurler. Now playing football with Art Moore. 
the Garda feeds it on as far as Seamus Prendergast coming forward left footed by Prendergast sends it long for his county hurling mate Clinton Hennessy Clinton has just Joey Mullen to beat he's gone inside Joey this could be dangerous for Battle of Court and Clinton goes through gets his shot across the face of the goal and picked up by John Hurley good run good dart by Clinton Hennessy got inside his marker but he shot screaming across the face of the goal and the Battle of Court defence come away once again it was a chance Kieran and a decent chance but again the Battle of Court defence stood firm as, as it has done all afternoon thus far 18 and a half minutes gone two goals no score ball taken by Seamus Prendergast there across the face his dad may hail from Cork but Sean and, and his brother Dermot very much part and parcel of the Bellin and back up absolutely Kieran and you know that midfielder Sean O'Hale and Patrick Lynch it might be the most heralded of, of partnerships but I haven't seen them beaten in this championship campaign so far and young Sean O'Hare is having a very fine game out there so far I noticed Tyler Walsh there the umpire is calling for the referee's attention down the right hand side on the it be interesting to see what Tyler Walsh saw because he's, he's an experienced referee he saw something he's held up play and he's called the referee's attention so something off the ball that we didn't see following the play Sean O'Hara's picked himself up and Rua Kiley having a great game this afternoon as first aid man and Ian Kiley makes his way back off the field but the referee's going across I think he's going to have a word with two of the defenders and it looks like Gavin Breen is having a word with here and he might be putting the name of Gavin Breen into his little notebook he's marking Billy Harty at the minute and uh, referee having ordered him Wayne Hennessy to take a bit of hold up and play there for the injury and for the umpire's intervention as the ball is kicked dangerously across the face of the Balnacorti goal who's first to react to it it's an art more man they have position it's Gary North what can he do it gets it back to brother Alan the captain he takes his shot and sends it over to Martin scores and comes into 28 minutes and it's the captain who leads by example there 20 minutes looking for their first score that was a lovely point by Alan North they waited a long while but well executed it was indeed Kieran they certainly badly badly needed that still a long road from the travel but at least they're off the map now it may give them some little bit of a extra badly needed conference a well taken point by Ellen Ort two goals to a point Billy Harty looks anxious down the line Jay Prendergast of course has won national titles on the ploughing field and has won several awards but he'd dearly love another county medal Tommy Power the manager his father Tommy was one of the great footballers of Warford in 57 and the 60s part of the team that made the breakthrough in 65 keeping up a great tradition down on the sideline as well and of course Joe Salmon at Clash Mormon now helping out his neighbours in Ardmore kick out one out of the air by James O'Donnell good play by the man from Ardo swings it across to Niall Hennessy he's gone inside the 45 what can he do it feeds it through to Clinton he looks at the options goes down the shot takes a shot it's a great score by Clinton Hennessy lovely bit of movement sweeping movement and that was a brilliant shot by Clinton Hennessy he's well out to stop him and hurling my god he can take it in football Johnny that was a flash point that's certainly the best score of the game today Kieran without any shadow of doubt he got a beautiful kick on it and absolutely split the, split the crossbar, the uprights with it. A magnificent score by Clinton Hennessy. The painting decorator has put his name on the score sheet. Two goals to two points, six points to two, 21 and a half minutes gone. Kick out for Battle of Stephen Enright to take it, the UCC student, keeping up great family tradition. Of course, Dom Enright played for Waterford. His uncle Pat Enright and his deadly part and parcel of every side over the years. From the kick out, ball breaks to Shane Briggs. Shane Briggs puts Battle of Court in the attack. Drop inside the 45. It's Patrick Pochorny. He holds a position. What can he do with it? He's teasing up at the full back. He flicks it inside, looking for support inside. But well won inside by cornerback Austin Flavin. Gets it on to Declan Prendergast. He gives it to Niall Hennessy. That's good play by the Art Moore defence. Supple has it again, feeding it out into the corner to Johnny Hennessy. He's from way deep, way back deep to take it. There by Gavin on Declan Prendergast there. They really met two big strong men, met at full belt there. And I like Declan Prendergast there when he got that challenge there. Johnny just bounced up and takes takes the... Um, yeah, yeah, it was a very fair chance. Yeah, it was physical, it certainly. Yeah, I'm sure Declan felt it for a, for a second or two. It was an absolutely fair challenge uh, and no, 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 no criticism whatever of it. Richie Foley takes it for Battle of Court. He sends it in long. Ball breaks down. 20 metres out. But picking up his mark. Mark Farrell feeds it through to Paul Turney. He gives it across to Mark Fives. Goes for a chance. And then saves inside by Hurley there. Mark Fives tried to thread it through. But Hurley came off his line. Smothered the ball. Relieved the pressure. 40 yard more. And it goes out for a 45. But my God, it looked a certain goal. Farrell come fetch it and fed it to Paul Turney. He gives it across to Mark Fives. Mark Fives tried to go to 45. Mark Fives coming out to take it. Lovely sweeping movement by Ben Lacorti. Mark Fern was involved. Pudge Hurley was involved. In the end, it ended with Mark Fies. But good, good marks to Connor Hurley in goal. He was alert to it, came out, smothered the ball, and now it's a 45. Fives taking it.
it. Kevy, a good run at this one. Right footed, kicks it in around the edge of the square, broken down inside. The ball breaks to Mark Fern. Come, did he foul? He foul in the end, of pushing the back, I think, by Gary Horney as he went up for that ball. And referee John Michael Kelly says free out and relief for Ardmore. Relief for Ardmore, Kian, uh, certainly. Uh, they were in possession there, but last it said, very luckily for Ardmore. You're listening to our AIB big mess. 24 minutes gone. It's a county senior football final. Two goals for Ballon Corty, two points for Ardmore. And from this free, Seamus Prendergast wins it, gives it to his brother. Declan. Declan gives it on to Johnny Hennessy, son of Richard. He's gone forward now, giving it to Declan Prendergast. Declan has gone inside the battle of 40, 45, swings it across to Wayne Hennessy. He's a danger man on this Ardmore attack, turning to his trusty left, the county star, swings it inside. It goes to Billy Hart because he fouled. Yes, says the referee John Michael Kelly. Lovely ball in by Wayne Hennessy. Well won inside, under pressure. One would have to say by Billy Hart. He wins himself a free, dead straight in front of goal, and a chance for him, for Ardmore, to bring it back to just a one goal differential. Yes, Kieran, and that was a movement that we saw Ardmore at their absolute best, started from deep in their own defence from a free, carried on brilliantly by Declan Prendergast. It was one of the best moves of the game, in fact. A free in here. I'm absolutely certain it will be converted and that narrows the deficit to three points so there's still a glimmer of hope there for Armour. So Billy Harty takes his time with this one, sticks it over the bar it's two goals for three points, first point for Billy Harty of the afternoon of course he's been one of their best scorers and top scorers throughout the championship campaign but he'd be delighted to get his name on the score sheet once again yeah, well, Kieran has said the deficit has been halved now from six points to three, but Corty are still the dominant factor, no doubt, no doubt whatever about it so far, and that will flatter by a three-point lead at this stage. 25 minutes gone here in the first half in Fraher Field. Good crowd here in the stand. It's for the Conway Cup, of course, and at this stage we'd like to say hello to Joe Conway, who's listening in, I believe, from home. Of course, they put up that cup all those years ago, and where's it going to rest tonight from the kick-out? Are more on the attack there. It was Wayne Hennessy again. He's starting to cause problems for the Belnacorti defence. He is fouled. It's going to be free for Ardmore. Clinton has the ball in his hand. No, he's leaving it actually for Jamesy O'Donnell. Jamesy coming out to take it, the vegetable farmer. His dad, Jamesy, was on the last Ardmore team to make the breakthrough. That was in 1977 when they won the title. Swings the ball, James Big Cross was first react to this goalkeeper in right inside. That's good. Sharpness by the Belnacorti goalkeeper, but his clearance is blocked down well inside. And it's going to go for a 45, but Clinton Hennessy did. So kick out to the Belnacorti men. Stephen Enright to take it. Wearing the green and white. A lot of green and white support around, as there is blue and white this afternoon. A lot of colour here in the far field. Bob the kick out there, pushing the back. I think it's Seamus Prendergast there from the kick out. A judge that pushing the back on Patrick Lynch is going to be free out and relief for Belnacorti. Richie Foley to take it. The UCC student, son of John, of course, made his name of the Shamrocks and the Warford Horror back in the 60s. Richie now on the county senior panel. And of course, accomplished football as well. Long ball in. Gary Horney goes out but as foul as he goes out for that ball it's going to be free and John Michael Kelly I think might have a word with the cornerback but is he just noting him yeah just giving a warning there to Conor McNamara who has his hands full with Gary Herney indeed he has Gary is roaming all over the field now Kieran and causing a lot of problems for the Ardmore defence so it's a free just inside the 45 Mark Fives to take it his dad Greg of course has been part and parcel of the Zabby side club and of course his grandfather before him and he's keeping up a great tradition of course Dickie on the panel as well this afternoon as Mark takes his time with this one inside the 45 left to right Bellacorti playing, kicking into the town goal or the country goal, caught by Gary Horney, but breaks down as far as James e. O'Donnell was back helping in defence. That's good play by O'Donnell. He wins the, the free, is going to be free out. And I think there's a bit of dissent by Gary Horney there. And in the end, I think the ball is just going to be brought forward. 28 minutes gone, two goals to three points. You'll listen to our AMB big match down under us here. The wise men, Jay Prendergast, Joey Salmon, Billy Harty, Dr. Joe Meehan, they're down under us. I see Liam Cleason there as well. He's horse, Rena Dacia won last weekend. He'll be hoping for a double with Ardmore becoming kings of the Dacia in football Rena Dacia in the football but the linesman here has seen something as well or is it how much uh, additional time I think the, 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 there, was, there was a few stoppages he, the linesman making his way back Tim Byrne two Jim Joe Landers and Eddie Cunningham and we'll see the board going up shortly but I put three minutes at max at best Kieran yeah it's extraordinary for all the position Kieran that Courtney haven't yet kicked the point it's, 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 it's an extraordinary oh! Ardmore on the attack the ball goes straight into Clifton this could be Davis, gone inside the 20 metre line, gives it across to James E. O'Donnell. What can he do? It takes his own!
kicks it right and wide. Score remains two goals, one four. A bad, bad battle in the court. A bad, bad out more, Miss Keane. I don't know why Alan North didn't have a pop himself. Sure, he was in a position to kick it, uh, abdicated responsibility in some sense, and uh, Wayne didn't oblige. It was a poor wide in the end. Sean Byrne, the photographer, eyeing up for a photograph from this kick out down our left hand side. Stephen Enright to take it. Good boot of a ball with the ball in the court he goalkeepers kicks it high it's hanging in the air Linney goes high that's Patrick Lynch batted down coming across for this John Horney the captain must he foul yes says the referee inside his own 45 ball in the court he really stung by that goal just before half time and then Clinton Hennessy with a super kick all of 45 metres putting them in front ball in the court he's swinging forward caught inside by Suckles the full back we've seen some good full backs in our time but this man is really putting in a great display in, in the county final to Richie Hennessy sends it long to Alan North was it a foul? Yes, the pull of the jersey and John Michael Kelly. Says to Clinton Hennessy, he was involved going forward to the ball. Clinton shakes his head in disapproval, but it's going to be free out and relief for Battle Court. He could have been dangerous had Alan North got a free run. Yeah, but undoubtedly was a free, a correct decision, Kian. He gave a tug on the jersey. So, free for Balnacorti. Descent there and the referee bringing the ball forward again. Richie Foley takes it, kicks it long, kicks it high, putting Balnacorti on the attack. Gary Hurley comes out for it. He's 25 metres out. He has the ball being policed by Conor McNamara going forward as Gary Hurley, but he wins himself a free. His advantage rule wasn't played as Mick McNamara, his dad, the new Clare Hurling manager, comes up and takes his position. Not quite sure. Is he down just watching the football or is he trying to keep an eye on what's happening on the hurling front as well, Johnny? Yeah, absolutely. But my first criticism of the day for the referee, Dickie and Gary was clean through and we should have been allowed to continue uh, I, I think to see he was penalised in the end by being called back but it's a free from which uh, Balnacorte I would expect will kick the equaliser Conor McNamara gets his name in the little red book and guard of course Tony is lot in men has won and played with Claire Claire Miners in hurling and Tony's lot in with the Ardmore Club and a good addition to the Ardmore Club now gets a yellow card for that free but it's a free in and Gary is going to take it himself it's on the 12 metre line but he seems to be back chatting with referee John Michael Kelly and no no he's just warning him again to keep his mouth shut and it's a 12 metre free for Gary Horney right at the post halfway between the upright and the corner flag kicking in towards the town goal or the Colligan River the estuary left footer takes his shot sends it over to Barney equaliser and Gary Horney gets his first point and Ben Lacorti's first point 2-1-1-4 one, one, during that Ben Lacorti didn't deserve Johnny after that good run and being called back for that free absolutely Kieran justice has been done in the end no doubt at all Connor Hurley to take the kick out what a first half he, he's had this goalkeeper wearing the all blue the fireman from Ardmore knee heavily bandaged wearing an all blue strip kicks it out in the middle of the field the blue and white of Ardmore fielded brilliantly in the middle of the field by John Phelan good play by Fifi gets across to Mark Five. doesn't get it on the first attempt did he tip it on the ground yes said referee free take quickly by Richie Hennessy gets across to Wayne Hennessy cousin to cousin fling flinging it forward now this could be dangerous the supper coming forward well hit by John Kindergill there met him on the meat there in the, with the shoulder ball brings out to Richie Foley good determined run run by Richie here cut for this afternoon built for speed left footed kicking it across the face of the goal Goal. What can he do? The sub comes off, and that's the full back. Was it a push in the back? Yes, says the referee. And the referee, a judge, is Gary Horney to push in the back. And Gary doesn't agree with the decision, but there's one referee. Ball taken quickly, could have been dangerous, but well won by Wayne Hennessy. He's come way back to help inside his own 45. Abbey, Abbey side, or Battle of all square at this stage. Ball goes to Declan Prendergast towards the middle of the field, coming forward. Lance Horney hits him very hard. Two hands for the referee. John Michael Kelly and a free for Battle of Court. He's substitute warming up. Son of Johnny Hennessy coming on and Conor McNamara being called ashore, more known as a hurler, given his lot but a difficult task, Martin Gary Horney for any defender, and it's going to be free for Art Bourne. And again, the sent by Abbey Side. The free was in the middle of the field from the battle court. He meant referee has brought it forward. Now, just aside the 45, Conor McNamara comes off and comes Cahill Hennessy, but the free is to Art Moore, just aside the 45 meter line. As I said, the free was awarded around the middle of the field, but the sent has brought it forward and it's well within Clinton's capabilities. 4-5 already in the championship two today. Two points make it 4-7. Chips it. He's dropping it in around the edge of the square. Billy Harty goes high. Gets a fist onto it. Picked up inside by John Horney, the centre-back and captain. Holds possession. Coming out with it. Was he fouled? Yes, says the referee. And a free out for the ball in the court inside her own 20-metre line. 
2-1-1-4 you're listening to our AIB big match all square here in Fratter Field five and a half minutes gone quick free taken by Ben Lacorti out to Gavin Breen what can he do with it 20 metres out bit of overplay dispossessed inside oh, Mike Clinton Hennessy but referee says a Michael foul there again. that could have been dangerous ended up John in the back Michael of the net Clinton finished it off in the back of the net but definitely the whistle had gone but a bit of overplay by Ben Lacorti could have proved costly absolutely the ball should have been cleared directly and there would be no such trouble but uh, fortunately for them the referee saw free and the, the ball which ended up in the back of the net has been disallowed this is we'd like to say hello to Pat Allen who I believe and the gang out in Boston and Dan Mack out in Algeria they're listening there are more men they'll be happy that it's all square so far and their men are on the attack Alan North has the ball got inside the 45 for Ardmore kicks it over and the lead once again for Ardmore and the quite superb point here by the captain leading by example 45 metres out straight between the uprights a madness madness point by Eleanor and also say hello to Tom Tucky Walsh or Tucker Walsh of Ring one of the oldest Ardmore supporters a big Ardmore supporter I believe Mossy Hallan is here as well who's been part and parcel of the team are they going to see history be made with the title going back to Ardmore for a third time are Ben McCourty going to get it for a fourth it's 1-5 that's 8 points 2-1 to Ben McCourty is seven. Ardmore lead by one. Six and a half minutes gone. Good kick out again by Enright. Holding high in the middle of the field and dropping. And a foul there by the Ardmore. And as the ball drops, it's going to be free for Balnacorti. Shane Briggs, the St. Declan's teacher there, trying to grab the ball off Niall Hennessy. But he gets the ball back and it's going to be free inside their own 65. Richie Hennessy or Richie Foley going across to take it. Hurler come footballer left footed with this one sends it in high looking for Gary inside that's Gary Horney he's held it he's released by Richie Hennessy turns to his left takes his shot but referee again had blown his whistle and again Gary had won a good ball referee blows his whistle I think the ball actually had gone over the bar but referee John Michael had, uh, Kelly had blown the whistle and I think it's going to be free in for Van Lecorti yes Kieran the ball had actually gone over the bar again I think a, a, a situation where the referee should have allowed the play to continue but it's a free it's on the 20 metre line Mark Fine with his right foot, Gary put the last one over with his left. The score, 1 5 2 1. Artmore lead by one. A chance now for Alan Corti for the equaliser. Young Mark Fives to take it. The UCC student with his right boot. He's kicking into the town end. Has a good run up at it. Takes his shot and sends it over the bar. The equaliser by Mark Fives. Now we have a game in our hands. Eight minutes gone, Johnny. Even Steven. Oh, it's difficult to call it here. There's, there's little or nothing between these two sides. Tucky Organ, one of the great supporters, had the flags out earlier in the week. He's looking forward eagerly to, to today's final over on the far side. The kick out on the 20-metre line. Connor Hurley is going to take it, wearing the all-blue. He's been a busy goalkeeper today, but has earned his crust for the Art Mormon. Tom Power, the manager, polices the line like a line in the cage. Hurley kicks it out. It's hanging in the middle of of the field broken down by Ben Laporte to Lawrence Horney who's first reacted looking for brother Gary Gary wins this ball he has possession gets it out to Paul Chess Patrick he's in on goal takes his shot oh it's off the crossbar and over the bar it looked a certain goal well won by Gary and a true to younger brother Paul Horney he had a rasper of the shot has been hurling but the crossbar denied him a goal ends up over the bar what a movement and what a let up for Ardmore desperately desperately unlucky for Ben Laporte there Cian that Magnificent effort by Podge Hurley, brilliantly put through by Gary, but a, a blockbuster drive by Podge off the crossbar, over instead of under. But they're back in the lead here. And the Corti back in front, 2 3 1 5, 9 points to 8, 9 and a half minutes gone. Kick out down the far side again. Connor Hurley being busy in the second half. We kick out towards the middle of the field. Who's first to react to it? It's Johnny Hennis. He's come way out. Namesake of the legend, Johnny. He's over on the far side watching every kick. Pat Prendergast is over there as well. I see some Declan wins the ball and wins the Free. He takes it quickly up to the far side to Nile Hennessy coming forward. He's gone inside the 45. The wing back could get his first score of the afternoon. Strings it across to Wayne Hennessy. One Hennessy to another. Wayne looking for an angle. Right footed kicks it under pressure and kicks it right and wide there. A third white for Ben Lacorti, but or for Ardmore. Five white for Ben Lacorti, but score remains 2 3 Ben Lacorti. 1 5 Ardmore. Ben Lacorti lead by one. Yeah, that was over ambitious by Wayne Cian. The angle was almost impossible. He would have done far better off to try and centre it. It was, it was an over ambitious attempt that uh, had its inevitable uh, ending going wide. Ten minutes gone in the second half. You're listening to our AIB big matches, a county senior final. Last weekend we had a classic with Ballyduff Upper. 
capturing their third title and of course going on to a Munster Club action next weekend who will be representing Waterford this year in the Munster Club time will only tell there's just about 20 minutes left under 20 minutes ball for the kick out to Mark Fies well won by Mark Fies a foot block there by substitute and 65 metres out from the Ardmore goal take quickly by Mark by Mark Five to Mark Ferncombe he swings it across cut off inside well by Declan Prendergast good play by the centre back gets it on to Wayne Hennessy son of Pat out around the middle of the field Wayne flicks it into the corner Billy Harty tries to do a 1-2 there but picking up the breaking ball is John Phelan leaves it for Joey Mullen Joey Mullen gets on to Richie Foley Richie Foley coming forward 45 metres out from the Ardmore goal he gets it to Mark Five he gives it back to Richie Foley coming forward he's gone inside the 45 what can he do it lose possession he overcarries a bit in the end, a bit too adventurous by the halfback, and now Ardmore have possession inside their own 45. Alan North has it. What can he do? It steadies it up. Gets on to Cahill and see the substitute. He sends it long. Cut off inside by Gavin Breen. That's good play by the experienced Breen, the engineer in the council. Doing well. Gets it out to Sean O'Hare. He gives it back to Patrick Lynch. Lynch sends a long one. Grandmother down under us. Chrissy watching every boot. Gets it to Gary Hornby. He wins it. 30 metres out. He turns it side one man. Tries to get away from two. Swings it across. To the man coming forward, John Phelan. Turning to his left hand side, what can he do when he has possession? Gets it back to Patrick Hurney. He's going for a long one. It looks a good one. It looks a great one, but it's gone left and wide. There and it hit the post, but it was the post behind the goal, and it's left and wide. Score remains two three one five. Good movement by Van McCourty in the end, kicked wide by Bud Journey. Absolutely, Kieran. Gary Gary Hurney is, is causing more and more problems as this game goes on for the for the uh, more defence. He really is becoming a hugely influential play, player here, and I think Courtney are beginning to. to Tighten their grip again after that bad second quarter. Mark Gorman being warmed up of a vital forward on this panel part and parcel of the team who captured 321 titles very accomplished hurler as well Benny Shields has the notebook out he's taking out his biro Niall Moore one of the selectors issues the instructions we might see a substitution soon from the kick out it's won well again by Niall Hennessy having a great game by the Ardmore when he is foul it's going to be free out for Ardmore over on the far side inside their own half 45 metres out play held up there as Mark Ferncombe received an injury there he's down seems to be in a bit of agony not quite sure if he's just dislocated a finger or something because um, Rua I see the first aid man there Matty Kiley coming in as well but he seems to be in a bit of pain it looks like he's just trying to fit in the finger from that kick out Johnny he must have just turned back the finger it's something related to the hand anyway Kieran it looks as though they're trying to stretch a finger but uh, I think he's alright I see Brefney Hannan there she was busy last weekend with the a great tradition. Absolutely, Kieran. It's, it's, bre it's bred into, as the fellow says. Free take quickly by Nicklin Prendergast there. People are just getting back in their positions, but cut off at the other end by John Phelan. Out to the middle of the field to Patrick Lynch. Gives it to Mark Ferncombe. Getting his first touch since that injury. Giving it in to Gary. That's Gary at full forward. Turning to his left there. Didn't steady himself. It's gone left and wide. A seven wide for Banla Forty. They still lead by one. Two, three, one, five. And we've what, gone 14 minutes, gone in the second half. Well, I've Wayne Hennessy at the other end, Kieran. That again was over that ambitious on, on Gary's part. Now he is, as I said, hugely influ influential so far in this final, but he was really expecting too much if that if he wanted that one to go over the bar. Jay Prendergast has seen it all before. And down on the line for Ardmore. He's chairman of course of the club and he's also a selector. Uncle of Declan and Seamus and of course young Pat on the substitutes as well. Kick out is by Connor Hurley. Dropping outside the 45 metre line. Well won again by Johnny Hennessy. Fed it back. A dangerous ball to Declan Renegan. Nearly the captain here by John Hurley there, but. A dangerous ball back by Johnny Hennessy. Declan Pendergast did well to catch it, but John Hurney fouls. It's going to be free for Art Moore. And John is a player that gets very much up for a game and letting his words known to John Michael Kelly and Lawrence Hurney, the older brother, asking him to steady it down. But his name goes into the little red book. 2 3 1 5. Johnny, this game is finally balanced right throughout and definitely is right going, going to go down to the wire. Oh, it looks, all, it looks that way now, Kim, certainly. There's little, there's little between the two sides. As I say, that early on, it was all courty. After that, Art Moore but now I think Corky have reasserted themselves they're marginally the better side at this juncture but it's all to play for Kieran this is going to go right down to the wire I see Mark Gorman warming up because Bernard part parcel of the senior hurling team Mark part parcel of the team who is one under 14 16 minor under 21 hurling in football very accomplished player the WIT student he'll be coming on shortly for Ballon Court but the free is taken quickly by Richie Hennessy up towards up towards Johnny Hennessy did he play it on the ground but he was fouled before he hit the ground 
Son of Richie there, number 13, wins a free for Ardmore. It's a vital one. They trail by one point. Cahill Hennessy comes forward to take it. He's son of John Hennessy. But it's the free is going to be taken by Billy Hartley. Brought forward for descent again. A lot of descent on the ball on the court side. And the referee John Michael Kelly having none of it. And now it's a free about 40 metres out. Just left the centre. And for a right footed kicker, it's one that you'd love to put over. Well within his capabilities, Billy Hartley. Kicks it lovely, swinging around the edge of the square, goes high to the fist, go to it, noses the umpire with the fist of an art more man, it's left and wide, good scoring chance, gone a begging, I think it's Mark Ferncombe has been called ashore, he picked up that injury, and now it's a big chance for Mark Gorman, and Mark Gorman is no mean substitute to bring on Johnny. Oh, not at all, he, he, he's a mighty substitute to have on the sideline, unluckily for Mark Gorman, he clearly has picked up a hand injury here, not able to continue, but as you say, they have a very admirable substitute in, in, in Mark Gorman. I'm sure Seamus Bernan, who was par parcel of Bell Corty when they won in 78, 79 and 01, looking down from above. He's the grandfather. He'll be proud of his grandson and his contribution to Bell Corty this year. Pat Flynn, the county chairman, down under us in the Art Corral area with John O'Leary and Mick McNamara, the player manager. Arms folded, watching every kick of the ball. The ball to the kick out, won by James O'Donnell. But James Bonnie now, James Prendergast is in on goal. This could be James for Cody Twins. Come on, James, he crossed. Oh, well saved inside by Stephen in right there. Not sure if it was the right option by Prendergast, but relief for Banda Corty. And away they come with the ball. Richie Hennessy has, or Richie Foley has it, playing a lot of ball. To Paul Chorney, that's Patrick coming way back in the fence to help. Swings the ball across to older brother John. John gives it back to Pudge. Good play by Hurley. He has the ball now, and he's on 65. Sings it long. Look for Gary Hurley. Gary comes forward. Being released there by Richie Hennessy, but Gary wins that ball. A super play by Gary. What an athlete this man is. He's fouled and out as he goes forward. Johnny Gary Hurley. He must be a nightmare for any defender to make. Absolutely. He's, he's hugely influential here, and he's winning position uh, uh, virtually at will. He, his jersey was tugged there as a deserved free in for Balna Corty. But if Corty win this match, it, it will be because of Gary Hurley. Gary takes it quickly to Poach Hurley. Drops it dangerously in around the edge of the square, but in the end, the ball. Goes off a Banda Corti man and wide. Some of the Banda Corti players claiming that it went off an Ardmore defender, but Gary took it quickly, gave it into Patrick, the younger brother. He had a shot for it, dropped in around the edge of the square. Hands went high, but it was a Banda Corti hand last to touch it. Score remains 2 3. 1-5, Banda Corti lead by one. All to play for here, we're in the closing quarter now, and as I said, it's it really is all to play for. You listen to our AIB big match, it's our senior county final here, from, live from the Farrer Field, 2-3, 1-5, Banda Corti lead by one. 26 years ago, they met here in the Fraher Field. Balna Corti won on that occasion, but there's a good bit to go on this one for the destination of the Convent Cup for this year. The ball is taken quickly by Prendergast and a foul by the Ardmore man on the 45, or just outside the 45 metre line, and a chance for Ardmore. Some needless fouling by the Belly. Balna Corti defenders and now a chance for the equaliser. Look here and I see no sense whatever in that free, an absolutely needless free that's going to put that defence under under very serious pressure here. Wayne Hennessy to take it. County senior player of course this year already scored 11 points in the campaign looking for his opener for the equaliser outside the 45 he has the distance but he hasn't the direction. Billy Hartley tries to give it in it goes harmlessly right and wide it's the fifth wide for Ardmore but the scoreboard remains 2-3-1-5 Banda Corti leading by the slenders of mar margins by that one point a very poor effort by Wayne Hennessy there here Moon would have expected a lot better from him it certainly didn't put the uh, Banda Corti defence under, under the anticipated pressure the kick out for Banda Corti Jay Prendergast Joe Salmon Billy Harty there Dr Joe Mean they're having a word we might see some changes on the yard more side very very shortly kick out by Enright not as good as his last goes as far as Wayne Hennessy the ball broken away from Wayne by Patrick Lynch that's good play by Linney hurler of the year young footballer of the year a few short years ago sends a dangerous ball in running out to it is Hennessy but he drops it that was Richie Hennessy ball breaks to Gary Hurley inside the 45 gets it to Mark Corman first touch for the subject takes his shot oh it's gone we said he was a good man to bring on and he's rewarded the, the selectors a lovely sweeping movement again Gary Hurley very much to create a fitted on to Mark Gorman Hurley was a dipping shot Hurley got a touch on it but it's Mark Gorman's point stretching Ballon Corti to two uh, he's central in everything Gary, Gary Hurley and he laid off that beautiful for Mark Gorman but full marks to the substitute he's not long in the game and his finish was absolutely deadly accurate a great point by Mark Gorman could have been dangerous on the goalkeeper it was dropping in around just towards the crossbar but Hurley got his hand to it 
Puts it over the bar, but it's Matt Gorman's point, 210.15. His dad, Bernard Hale from Kildare, down in, in this area over 25, 30 years, very, and his son's very much part and parcel playing all their underage and went to school, of course, like all these young lads in the Abbeyside Garden Bay in school. From the kick out, ball goes to Patrick Lynch. He wins that ball into Mark Gorman, fails to hold it. Was there a foul? Yes, says the referee. By the way, the court, man is going to be free out and released. Yes, Austin Flavin, he's dead. Austin was part of the 65 team that made the big breakthrough for Ardmore. There's a foul on the bell on the Ardmore, man is going to be free. Carl Hennessy coming to take it to substitute. They trail by two. It's getting very dark here in the far field. 21 and a half minutes gone. Last weekend, we were struggling for light. As the ball goes out over the line, it's going to be line ball to Balnacorti, way over on the far side. John Phelan coming back to take it. Fifi. He's dead. Christie won a medal with Dungarvan. That was bad back in the 60s as a minor hurler. Fifi is doing it as a footballer with Balnacorti. And, of course, with the county team as well. But the ball dispossessed by the Art Mormon and dispossessed and chin by Gavin Green. That's good play by Gavin Green for Balnacorti. Gets the ball out to Sean O'Hare. The teenager on this battle of the team to Patrick Lynch back to John Hurney. John Hurney sends it long. Matt Fives is inside. Can he win it? No, it's beaten to him. Beaten inside. About 30 metres out down here on the stand side. He takes it quickly to John Phelan. Phelan gives it back to Hurney. He's turning to his left. Can he flick it over? No, instead he flicks it. I think he's steady himself. Lovely bit of one two with himself and Fifi. The ninth wide for Battle of Court. He score remains 2 10 1 5. And Gary Hurney is the most disappointed man out here in the field as he looks up to, to the sky. That qualifies as the worst spies in the game, Kiev, no doubt at least. Time ticks down 22 and a half minutes. The scoreboard reads 2 10 1 5. Hurley with the kick out, turning to 2 2 4 1 5. They lead by two. The men from Battle of Court. Mark Fives tries to hold up the ball there, but the ball ricochets off his leg, out over the line, and the linesman there, John Power, former Waterford goalkeeper, John Hillman, very much involved with the underage scene down in Butlerstown now, as the line ball is taken by Cahill Hennessy, gets it back to Declan Prendergast, Prendergast gives it back to Hennessy. 23 minutes gone, 7 minutes to go the ball is with Supple, he's been one of their stars of the afternoon, the fullback coming forward swings it out to Wayne Hennessy, the county star looking for his first score of the afternoon he's a danger man in possession, gets it back to Supple the fullback now is about 30 metres out he's come way up, he's going for a long one it looks a good one and he's been truly superb at fullback, and now he's got a point. It's back to the minimum. 2 4 1 6. Super score by fullback Michael Supple. One of the scores of the game came by one of the players of the game. Without any shadow of doubt, Michael Supple has been our most outstanding performance throughout, throughout this game. In fact, whatever does us, he'll be close enough to be man of the match. So time takes down. Could we have a draw here? 24 minutes gone here in the far field. The goalkeeper is Stephen Enright, prepares to take the kick out. Enright's Eurospar was a scene of green and white all week and flags and bunting being sold for the coffers and Ger Enright I believe has a good few hundred quid raised in the sale of all those colours and great to see those colours in abundance down on the left hand side there. It's a very colourful scene. Kick out is by Enright. That's Stephen towards the middle of the field. Won well by young Sean O'Hare. What a game he's having in the middle of the field. Feeds it through to Gary Horney wearing 30 but it hasn't been unlucky for him today. So he's across to the older brother. That's Lawrence. Lawrence gives it through to John to set the back going forward. Give him a two to pass. Oh! Over the far side, a very proud Gary has been influential, but all four Hurleys were involved as Patrick gets the goal. 3 4 1 6, a Hurley special. A great finish and a great goal here. And as you say, all down to the Hurleys. Gary with the man set it up onto Lance and Lance into John John and Hodge. Marvellous, marvellous goal. 25 minutes gone, 5 minutes left. But our ball will back to the very, very end. 3 4, that's 13 points to 1 6 is 9. There's 4 points separating the side from the kick out. The ball is with Richie Foley. He's played his heart out for the yard and the court he meant today. Coming forward, left foot at this time, sends it long. Coming out for his Mark Gorman, misjudged the hop. Coming out to it behind him is Cahill Hennessy. He's been impressive since his introduction for the yard. Mormon gets it out to Gary Nord, the big midfielder. What can he do with it? 
for the art movement, he's swings it forward. There. Is it too far oh, forward? Put up by Jim Kin, John Kindergan. He's that PJ. He's well known he's engineer of the council is a Galway man, but John is very much a bell in the court man. Ball goes up now to Paul Turney, the goal scorer. He holds up position. Mark Fives gives him an option. So too does John on the outside. That's the centre back and captain. Turning to his right. He turns it in, but it's gone. Right and wide there. Good sweeping movement again. It goes right and wide. Score remains 3 4 1 6. Four minutes left. Great effort. Court here is certainly in the driving seat now, Kieran. I don't see them relinquish it. I think the four titlets on its way to the village. And if it happens, well, then it will be have been deservedly so. Ten wise to battle the court, but the scoreboard reads 3 4 1 6. The ball is with Art Moore. They're battling hard. Take them friend against the inspiration centre back. The tractors are at a standstill at Art Moore, but Dixon is not as he comes for inside the 45. He's dragged to the ground by Patrick Lynch, and it's a free in for the Art Moore men. It's 30 metres out. Jay Prendergast looks at his watch. He's seen it all before. He was very much involved all those years ago, but a bit of a doubt he's seen off the ball there about 30 metres out. Two players unfortunately have got involved, and Johnny, it's been so sporting, and what a pity it's been marred like this. Uh, sure, just, well, I think it's up to handbags. you. Handbags, really, and truly, but un unnecessary, unnecessary. What a pity, because this game has been played as it should be. 26 minutes gone, almost 27 on my stopwatch. 3 4 1 6. The free is going to be yard more when all cam resumes. It'll be 35 meters out. Matty Kiley in like a shot from the from the side on there with that magic bottle. He's been part and parcel of the underage section. A goalie with the minor one minor goalie medals as a young player himself, very much involved in the underage section, bringing out that magic bottle to John Kindergan and referee John Michael Kelly having a word there with Declan Prendergast and I think Patrick Lynch but as you said uh, nothing more than handbag stuff rolling around but as we said it has been a very sporting game Johnny oh, indeed it has both teams have gone out to play football here and then the, yeah, was an, it was an incident it was over before it started really nothing to be too concerned about at all so the free is about 40 metres out 40 yard Mormon and being brought forward for, for descent here Tim O'Byrne saw something there. He gone into the umpire there, and Declan Prendergast has to come off for a blood injury. Peter Kerbin out there. Declan a great surging run by the centre back. Let's hope he won't be off for too long. Liam Gleeson is there on the sideline. Looks very concerned. Part of the backroom team. And of course, the free is tapped over the bar by Billy Harty. 35 metres out, brought forward for the sense. 35 metres out, Billy gets his second point of the afternoon. It's 1 7, 3 9. That's 10 points, Johnny, to 13. Can Art Moore well, rescue this one? It, it, it's just there's a score between them, but that score happens to be a goal. It's it's difficult to see them bre breaching that courtly defence, but who never knows. Art Moore want to capture their fourth title. Rua is over there. He's the he's the first aid man. He's covered every blade of grass this afternoon. Niall Moore is telling them to pick up their men. The kick out is going to be Ballon the Cortes. It's 29 minutes on my stopwatch. We've had a good bit of hole up there for a couple of injuries there. Running repairs on some of the players. It's been hard. It's been physical, but it's been very fair this county final. The kick out is going to be to Ballon the Corti down our left on the 20 meter line. Stephen Enright is taking it. They lead by a goal. Three points. 29 and a half minutes. You're listening to our AAB big match live here from Fraher Field. The kick out is good. It's high. They go high. Fits now in the air. By young Sean O'Hare as he's done all afternoon. Ball goes in now to Mark Five. He's a left footed player. It's down here on the stand side, kicking into the estuary and down on our right. Young kids behind the goal are waving the flags. Gary is concentrating on a ball. 45 metres out, left footed, turns to his trusty left. He's singing it in around the edge of the square. They go high. Who's first reactor? It's Nard Moorman and it's Johnny Hennessy back in defence. There's going to be at least three minutes of added time, so plenty of time for Art Moore to get this equaliser. They have the ball now with Gary North, number eight for Ben Lacordy. Gets it on to Hennessy coming forward. That's Richie Hennessy. He gets it on to Wayne Hennessy. After Hennessy, one two between the Hennessy's there. And a foul there by Lawrence Hurney. On Nile Hennessy, and it's going to be a free for Art Moore. Time takes down. Clinton Hennessy goes in and says, Get up and get on with it. Clinton has been their most potent forward this afternoon. Every time he has got the ball, he's used it well. He's worked it well. He's two points to boot. The free is inside the 65 meter line. We're into time added on. There's one goal between the sides. They're going to drop it in. They're looking for a high one inside. Now Richie Hennessy drops it in high. He's dropping around the edge of the square. Who's first to react to it? It's Billy Harty has it. He's near the end line. He kicks it dangerously across. Agonizingly across. Who's first to react to that one? It's Lawrence Hurley to that breaking ball. He grabs on it there. 
like a shark grabbing a, a smaller oh, fish there. He just was determined going for that ball. Once that ball broke, Johnny, it was going to be Lawrence oh, Hurley. Great play by Lawrence Hurley. Great play by Lawrence Hurley. Uh, unlucky perhaps not to get a free out, but it's a throw ball. But it was great, great play by Lawrence Hurley. Just 20 metres out from the Battle of Portugal. It's thrown in. This time as Gary Hurley has picked it out of here. He's back helping in defence. He's trying to come out. Brilliant. Brilliant. As he over Gary. The 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 aren't happy. It's going to be a free in. It's outside 20 metres. It's 3 4 1 7. They trail by a goal. Is there a goal? In Ardmore in these dying minutes. They've got one already. A great goal by James O'Donnell. Is there a second goal? Declan Prendergast has a word with John Michael Kelly. A lot of booing going on from the Ardmore or the Battle of Courtney supporters down under us. They feel it shouldn't have been a free in. John O'Donnell is down there. He's been a great heart more servant over the years. Looks after the ground. He can't bear to watch this one. Time is ticking down. Billy Hartley has it on his, in his hands. It's 25 metres out. Looking to know what the instructions are. It's taken quickly. He gets it inside to Wayne Hennessy. Was he fouled? He's looking for a free. Has he got a free? Gives it back to James O'Donnell. Running away from goal now. They're still inside the 20 metre line. Ball back to Supper. What can he do? Oh, James Ball. And by one man, Gary Hurley. He fouls it out through the middle of the field. A relieving clearance by Gary. Where did Gary come from there? Uh, he's been man of the match. In my, in my humble view, from, from Banda Courtney anyway. He's had a great game. Two and a half minutes on my stopwatch. 3 4 1 7. That's 13 points to 10. Adrian Flanagan is making his way to the sideline. The ball is with Banda Courtney. It's John Hurley. He's the captain. He's wearing six. Gets it on to Mark Five. He's done well. The UCC student. Greg will be proud of him. Gets it on to Sean O'Hare, down under the scoreboard, down on the right hand side, dressing him in the, of Freher Field. They hold the position, what can they do with it? Battle of Courtney have it, teasingly in front of the Arab Mormon. Ball back to Sean O'Hare, he still has possession, referee blows his whistle. Is it going to be free? And the crowd is starting to move away. I see Tommy Hennessy first out of the top. And it's all over! It's all over! And Battle of Courtney have captured their court! Or their fourth county title. They've won it 78, 79, 81. Now they've captured their fourth. Disappointment for Ardmore. And Adrian Fannigan is on the line with a delighted Tony Mansfield. Yes, thank you very much, Chairman Ban the Court. Chairman Tony Manny, your tears are flowing from your eyes. This is a proud day for Ban the Court. It's a great day, Adrian. A, a marvellous victory and a thank to management team of uh, players. A tremendous win. Uh, Ardmore, in fairness, gave a great account of themselves. But in the end, our experience and they. Good man, uh, uh, our experience, I suppose, having won so many underage titles, we've won four on 21s on the way up. We've built here with about seven or eight or nine years, and this is the cultivation of it. Uh, uh, interest in the hurling some, so, sooner or later, but a great day for the village and a great day for our parish. Um, you got off to the perfect start, two quick four goals, and I suppose the late rally, first half rally for Mardmore, and going in at the break, um, behind by a point, but the, really the second half character show from the Battle of Courtney team it, it is something to be very proud of here today. Ah, it's in a county final, and actually after we scored the two goals, uh, we went out of a bit, we should have had a few points, but having said that, a point down the county final is nothing. We, we had uh, management rallied them inside the dressing room went out and with the emphasis as well on points and I suppose the third goal killed it off a tremendous a tremendous uh, movement from the Horney brothers the four of them were involved and I think it's only fitting you know that uh, their father team manager so a great day great day for our club we're delighted to be back on top Tony Mansfield, I'll leave you go join the celebrations for the moment Kieran it's back to your it's back to you in the commentary position yes sir. <laughs>
But I know the same effort, the same work will be good. Your day won't be right away, and you're back here when we get it for 30 hours. So congratulations to 2007. Excited to watch the tonight's match and relive some of Abby Saiban and the Courties. Well, that's it, folks. Apologies there. Um, Battle of the Courty, County Senior Football Champions 2007. Now, rumour has it at the moment, or word has filtered through, that Kilcommon of Kerry will represent Kerry in the Munster Club Championship, and that game will be on in Killarney next Saturday night at 8 o'clock. So you can join us then next Saturday night at 8 o'clock, live from Fitzgerald Stadium in Killarney for the Munster Club semi-final between Ballinacorty and Kilcommon. Thanks very much for tuning in tonight. We hope that you'll all join us again next week at 8 o'clock. And until then, Gurvmila Mila Mahagav.